What's up, divas and devos? It's your girl April. So, of course, you guys already know what time it is. It is Wednesday, real talk Wednesday. Well, actually, it's Tuesday, so it's really like um, the Fourth of July. So, happy Fourth to everybody. I hope you guys are having like great or had a great Fourth of July, like with lots of food and drinking and friends and family. Yes, hunties. Yes. So, you know. Being that it's the fourth, I gotta get ready. I went early this morning. I didn't go anywhere. I went in my backyard and I cleaned it up, meaning um, I had to dust down the grills that I have. Like I have a gas grill and I have a charcoal grill. So I had to um, clean those down because I never bought a tarp or a cover to go over them. So they were really, really dusty and with dirt all over them. So I went ahead and cleaned those up and um, also cleaned my backyard floor off like the pavement back there off because you know I have two little dogs so they go to the bathroom out there and you know I put some fabuloso down and cleaned it with um, that and my big janitor brush mom calls it a janitor's um, broom because it is kind of like a janitor's broom and I cleaned the patio off and stuff like that me and Mumsy did that earlier this morning I tried to use my hose that I bought from the 99 cents only store but for some reason it does not hook up to um, the faucet outside you know the whole you know the thing outside so I don't know what's up with that um, not too happy about that but anyway that's that it's not like a big deal but it is a freaking big deal so yes, yeah, so I'm gonna have my best friend over and her family, my bestie Rebecca and her husband and her kids, and we're gonna do fireworks and we're gonna cook and stuff. So we're gonna do that. So of course I wanted to make sure it was clean. And like I said, friends and family. So oh my god, so like last week, you guys already know I post you guys to keep you guys updated. Last week on my real talk, did somebody named Muffins is a liar? It's supposed to be liar, L I. L I A R is liar, but it was L I E R. So muffins, muffins is allure. Like I think that's like some new zodiac sign, allure. L I E R. I mean, it would sound like it to me. So I guess I'm allure now. Um, like this, like some new zodiac sign. So that was their username. So like, did they go on like all of my real talk and just left all of this bullshit? I think it's Nicole, and I did leave a message. It was like, hey Nicole, because I really do think it was her saying that she was my friend and first of all i don't have any but two i did have two friends and how um she was sitting with me and a couple of my other friends and we was talking about people like so that's the part where i was like she was sitting with me and my two other friends one time i was like um really you never sat with my friend rebecca you've never even met her and second of all when have you ever sat with any of my other friends because you and rebecca are my two friends so she said a couple and a couple is two so then tati my daughter she had to be step in she was like mommy she didn't want to say she was sitting with you your daughter and your daughter's friend which is like my daughter ari and tati during i think it was either christmas or um thanksgiving it was one of those holidays when nicole came over and it was me tati and ari ari is tati's age my daughter so they were sitting in the kitchen and me and nicole were sitting in the kitchen and so ari and tati were over there talking crap about the strippers at the strip club and I forget what me and Nicole was talking about, but it had to be her. And um it just had to be her. That that that's part where it made me feel like it was her. But the part where it had me laughing my ass off is when she was like, she beat my ass, and I know it. First of all, I've never had a fight with any female out here, okay? Second of all, the last physical fight I've had with any female was um my mother-in-law my sister-in-law that was the last physical fight all the other fights that i've had been with dudes like you know my ex-husband or my ex-boyfriend that i had to put out that's the only two fights that i recall i've had and maybe she felt like she busted my ass or beat my ass when she was going off in my car so i had to basically be like oh because you wanted to because me and nicole ain't never had no physical fight but pussy i'm far from pussy i don't get no wins she was talking about you know it is what it is and this she's talking about how I was getting food stamps in section 8 I wish a bitch would pay for some shit up in here any motherfucker food stamps section 8 um what else is there um what else is there 
I don't know, but I wish somebody would because then I wouldn't be busting my ass and um, posting videos every day. And everybody knows that I used to get food stamps. Like I have posted this on my Real Talk video like many times before because I use my own life situations to be able to relate to what other people have been through. So everybody knows that I was on welfare at a time in my life. So there's nothing new to that. So if she feels like she was putting me out there, then okay. And I wish they would give me food stamps right now because if they were giving me food stamps, let me tell y'all, a bitch would be on the back of a shopping cart like happy as a motherfucker. All right. I'd be like Oprah Winfrey you gonna get a box of cereal you get a box of cereal you get a box of cereal everybody gonna get something but that ain't the fucking case so anyway and yeah then she basically went into i'm not a homeowner first of all neither are you nicole second of all never did i ever say i was a homeowner third of all and there is is a real talk video that says how i moved here and that i rent this house um if i was a homeowner why would i have had a virtual tour of the house while i was in new york that would make no sense because if I was about to buy a house, you best believe I'm going to fucking be able to walk through that shit. So it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It was just funny and I know who it is. I know it's her. And um, I wouldn't try me too much because a bitch like me, um, I never delete text messages. And it's not because I'm out to get you. It's just because I'm lazy and I never delete a text message, unfortunately. So I have all messages that anyone has ever texted me. Um, so if you ever try to say you've never said anything or you've never told me your business about why you've gotten um, fired from your job, um, best believe it's all on here. Okay. I do have um, all the text messages. I saved them. And I know a lot about... Um, this person so i would really just like kind of like be leery of me talking about wait for wait for but like i said my door is always open you're welcome to come over you busted my windows and it is what it is so yeah i'm just still working on getting my windshield reimbursed because that was 190 dollars out of my pocket so yeah Oh, but it was one thing that I did want to address. So she was basically like, oh, the money that I'm using for the GoFundMe is a lie. I, I lied about it. I won't be using that money. Funny how the teeth that's in my mouth. I do have teeth, brand new teeth. Just the two, but I did get dental work done. So um, I did get that done. And who are Muffins is a lure. Now their new name is I Am Karma. Whatever. You know what I mean? Your edges are still not there. Grow the motherfucking edges back and then you could come see me. But like I said, my door is always open. And I'm not going to sit here and waste any more of my time. So, it is the 4th of July. My electronic pen. It's not a cigarette. Um, I've been stopped smoking. Let me tell y'all. The dispensary is a lie. Okay? Y'all know. Y'all probably like the dispensary is a lie. It ain't really a lie, and you can be able to um, walk around very discreetly, and nobody will know what the fuck you're doing. So, okay, so this is actually... It's whatever you want to call it. That's exactly what this is in here. So it looks just like an electric cigarette. You know, it's very discreet. However, this is the portion right here that has all of the good stuff in it. So, I mean, I still do have my bongs because I love them so much. And I have um, new stuff for them. But this is actually my new favorite. And it's, but it will get you where you need to be really so quick. I don't want this video to be as long as last week's. Though I'm pretty sure that some people did in mine. But I'm really trying to hurry up and do my makeup. I don't really want my face to be too beat, but I just figured I can just do that with you guys again. You know what I mean? So I just put on these lashes today and I did something different. You guys know I love to use um, like individuals. That's all I wear. Um, and I've been using the Black Ardell um, Lash Type eyelash individual lash tight um glue so this is like really cool because i got three of these bottles from amazon for 11 bucks and this is the real ardell brand and this says it right here and this is the lash tight this is the individual glue and i'm sorry i'm i do apologize if it's blurry but 
you guys get the um, gist of it, the understanding. But so if you bought these at like your local beauty supply store or CVS or Walgreens drugstore, you would get like the small bottles, the glass bottles, and it's like six bucks, depending on where you go. There is the Ardell Clear and there's the black. So I've been using the clear for like a couple of years because this stuff really started to disappoint. Well, this was the only one that was at Amazon for like, you know what I'm saying, a good price. A good price. Especially if you're getting three of them for 11 bucks, you'd get two small bottles for like that price. So I definitely like jumped on it and actually it holds a whole lot better than the clear um, Especially the way that I do them now. So I've had like the same lashes on for like over two weeks Okay, so I had to actually change the right eye because that's the um, the side that I'm normally sleep on I run my eyes the most so Sometimes the right eye doesn't last as long as the black but whatever you know, so I put on my individuals and I just get them from, um, I get my individual lashes from iKateHouse.com because they're like a dollar nineteen a tray and I'll get like a whole bunch. They have like all different brands, all different sizes, everything. You know what I mean? Not free, whatever. They got all that stuff. And I have a link in the um, description box below for a direct link for the website. Um, just scroll down. It's like a default that I always have. But anyway, so I always get those. And then I got that glue, which was an amazing deal. I'll buy like 20 trays or 15 at a time, whatever, of eyelashes. And I, I have like a mess of strips. And I don't even wear strip lashes because I just cannot get them on to stay on like I used to. I think it's like when you get used to doing one thing, you just lose the knack for doing the other. So I used to know how to do my strip lashes really good, and then I stopped wearing them, and all I would wear was individuals. And only wear individuals because I don't have to put them on every day. They're just there. You know what I'm saying? So it makes life much easier, and I like shit to be real fucking easy. So I'm not really that skilled anymore at putting strips on. I wasn't all that great with it to begin with, but... But I did kind of master it. Well, being that I haven't done it in years, I definitely fell off. Okay? So, I don't, that's the reason why I don't wear strips. So, what I did today was I kind of like cut one of the strips in little pieces and placed it on the top of my natural lashes. So, underneath, I have my individuals, like, you know, right here under my eyelid, I have my individuals. That's where I placed mine at. And I do have a video for it that I did like three years ago. Um, on YouTube. So it's, it is on my channel. I really did it more than three years ago. I re-uploaded it three years ago um, because it was a video from my original channel. So anyway, I put those there and they last for like two weeks. So today I cut a couple of pairs of my strips and I placed like three pieces on this side, but I put it on the top and then the same thing right here. So there's some on the bottom and some on the top and my natural lashes are like in the middle and it'll stay on for like Probably for like a week and a half or maybe two weeks. I don't know because I added some stuff, so I don't really know. But anyway, that's what I was trying on today. But other than that, I really haven't been up to nothing much or whatever. Um, was kind of disappointed or sad the other day because my best friend Rebecca, her and her family, they're moving to California next month in August because her husband got offered a really good position at his job out here. He could become the boss in um, Cali. So they're going to try it out for like a couple of years and I'm like so bummed because I'm going to really miss her. Like, you know when you find like the perfect friend, you could be like an adult, an adult, and you went through your whole entire childhood, you know, making friends and calling them your best friends and really feeling like they're your best friends. You know what I'm saying? And but you know what? They end up coming and going. You don't keep them for long. And then but you, in your heart, you truly feel like, yeah, that's my best friend. I love them to death. That's really my best friend. But then somehow you fall out. You thought you had a lot in common until you meet somebody else or et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know what? I'm 43 years old and I've had a lot of friends in my lifetime. Some 
that I just can call my friends who I fuck with you, but not like that. And then some of them who I've called my best friends who have really like taken my heart and I love them to death. And sometimes I even hate that we might have fallen out and not speak to each other again. But it is so hard to make good friends these days, especially when you get like my age, like, you know what I'm saying? So I was like really heartbroken that my best friend, she's moving to Cali. Like it's only like a four hour drive, but that's cool. I drive for her anywhere. I go anywhere for her, but it just sucks that I won't be able to just get in my car and drive like three miles down the street whenever and just hang out with you and your family. Like that part really bothers me. And like, I just love her to death. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy because we became friends because of our two daughters who are in the same class, uh, Mumsy and Brenna, they're in the same class. And so they wanted to hang out with each other so bad one day at, when it wasn't any school. So, you know, they exchanged numbers and me and Rebecca, we, we spoke on the phone. Like, you know, at first I wasn't like feeling her like that. Like, you know, I didn't know her or whatever. So I really didn't think much of her. And then, um, <clears throat> I just got to know and we found out that we had like so much stuff in common like we've had the exact same minivan which was a Nissan Quest we have the exact same dog right now which is a um mini Dotson. you know Coco my first dog he's a mini Dotson, and she has Lucy which is a mini Dotson. Coco's older though we have the same amount of kids five kids but she has th um she has three boys and I have um, three girls. Then we both have the exact same number on our house. You know, like our, our number, our, our street number is the exact same, but our street name is different. We have that, that we have now. Um, we both like to do crafts. It's just crazy. We have a lot in common. So it's cool when you find somebody that you, you have so much in common with and like, it's just crazy and it's like amazing like because friends are so hard to find so i was like really bummed out like and i was crying i broke down in tears on the phone and was crying to tati while tati was at work and she was like well you gotta go out and make some new friends you gotta go out and make some friends and i was like no nope, i don't want to make no friends ain't nobody gonna take rebecca's place and nobody's gonna take rebecca's place and then um what was i saying then I started talking about, um, Tati was like, well, what about Shay? I said, I keep telling you Shay don't live out here. And she was like, well, you're going to have to go visit her too then. I'm like, yeah, I know. I have two best friends and neither one of them are going to be living near me. Oh my God. I, I just broke down in tears even more. It's crazy when you have like your adulthood and you can find like two people like me and Shay, we have so much in common. Like she puts up with my shit. Like who has a friend that will really put up with their shit like seriously i say this because she does like tati said to me the other day while we was driving because shay called me and i was like well she's gonna have to wait i'm driving right now tati was like you're the worst best friend you wouldn't be my friend i was like what the fuck is you talking about she was like you didn't even answer the phone i was like shay no i wasn't going to answer the phone she know i'm gonna call her back she was like i wouldn't be your friend i was like i love shay and she knows i love her right this is what i'm saying to tati so when Tati goes in the bank, I'm sitting in the car waiting. So then that's when I call Shay, right? And we're talking. And I said, you know what Tati said? And then I told her what Tati said. She was like, oh, she's right. Because I was saying to myself, I ain't going to fuck with you no more. I was like, don't say that. You know you're going to fuck with me. You know you love me. You put up with my shit. And she was like, oh, no. I was not going to fuck with you. I was like, take that back. Take the shit back. Because I know you still love me. So it's just crazy how you can find a friend that you like really, really are compatible with. And then you just guys like, it's, I don't know why I say it's crazy, but with this day and age, I guess I can say that it's crazy because some people are so fucking fake. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so hard to meet like a real cool or true person because people are so fucking fake these days. Like literally fucking fake. You think they real and you think they cool and then you find out they really fake or they was only out to be with you or hang out with you for one fucking reason. Like regardless of the reason it was, it isn't anything positive. So this is what I'm talking about. When you find a good friend, hold on to their motherfucking ass. Seriously. That's basically all I wanted to say because Friendship is hard to find. And even if you got to go and drive four and five, six hours or get on a plane to go see him, then fucking do the shit because friends are so hard to find. Like, literally. 
Seriously, especially when they're real. Like, you could find a friend, but then that motherfucker really ain't your friend. That'd be like the devil, the enemy, just sitting in your goddamn living room and shit. Huh. For real. Well, that's basically all I wanted to say. Um, other than that, I don't really have much to talk about. You know? Been vlogging more. I just have to um edit the videos. So, <clears throat> let's get into this real talk. You guys know the drill. If you have a real talk that you want to um to discuss on my channel, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Go ahead and put in the subject line, real talk, so that way I know that it's a real talk subject. And if you want to change the names of the characters in your email, meaning like if your name is really Sharonda and you don't want anybody to know your name is Sharonda, so you say your name is April, Fine, just let me know that. So other than that, let's get into this real talk. I'm going to go ahead and put my concealer on, which is by Ruby Kisses, or um, New York Kisses. And this is their Professional Cream Contour Palette. I used this last week in real talk. I like it for underneath my eyes. Thank you for reading this, and I hope you choose me as a topic because I have issues and really need insight. I know you keep it real, so who better than you? So I'm Lee, by the way. I feel like I don't know what to do with life in general. I feel like it's consuming me. I met a man a year ago that I was in love with. He started doing me so dirty, using me, asking for money all the time and to fuck and and to fuck and that's the only time a bitch got a phone call. Sometimes we go a whole week without talking to me. It's strange because I have no clue why he changed. Our relationship started out so good, but by the end of it, I hated myself. I'm a big girl, but I have never felt insecure about my weight. But he brought out a side of me I've never seen. I'm insecure, cry all the time, and he won't even talk to me now. He told me there wasn't anyone else, but I'm not stupid. On top of all this, my friends, my friends are advancing, starting families or already have children. I'm 27 with no with one ovary due to surgery. No children. I feel like my time is running out. Please help your girl out. P.S. Sorry this was long. I don't get to tell many people how I really feel. Oh, She's going to make me cry just from reading that. So her name for the email is Lee. I think that's how you pronounce it. If not, then I do apologize. But basically, she's 27 years old. She was with this dude for how long did she say? She didn't even say how long she was with him. Oh, um, she met him a year ago. So basically, they've been together a little bit over a year. And she met him a year ago and... She fell in love with him. He started doing her dirty. Wow. So she's 27, and it seems like she's really depressed about how this one dude is doing her. And listen, let me tell you something, sweetheart. Just because you're a big girly does not mean you deserve to be fucking mistreated. Okay? I don't give a fuck what size you are. It don't matter what size you are or who the fuck you are. You do not deserve to be mistreated by anybody. Man, female, whatever. Especially if you in a committed relationship and you giving them your all and they treating you like dirt. Girl, that's where you go. The highway is right there behind you. You need to get a move in, okay? And move fast forward that shit. I say this shit all the fucking time. It's hard to be in a relationship and then when you break up with the person, you, you're you depressed. Sometimes you're sad. It's hard. What do you expect? That's because it's a relationship and if you really care for the person, of course you're going to hurt because you're not in a relationship with them. But let me tell you something. If you're being mistreated in the relationship and out of 100%, 90 of the percentage is being be you're being mistreated and talked to any old kind of way and being used then why the fuck would you stick around okay like i just said if you're in a relationship and 90 percent of the relationship you're being mistreated meaning dogs out used talk to any old kind of way ridiculed then why would you want to be with the person what makes you think that's the fucking relationship like okay like seriously like i know everybody wants to be with somebody it's 
it's a known fact. Nobody wants to be alone. And if there is a person that doesn't want to be with anybody, they just want to be all alone for the rest of their lives, then maybe you have to check their lifestyle out, why they may feel that way. Maybe they went through so much in their life that they just don't want to be with anybody anymore. However, I'm pretty sure deep down inside that they don't really want to be alone. But some people just take it to like, you know what? Fuck it. What am I going to do? I just might as well just be by myself. Sometimes a bitch feel like that too. For real, I start feeling that way by my own self because you know why? I'm 43 years old. You talk about yourself, Lee, and you feel like your friends are advancing and how they got families or boyfriends or husbands or whatever, but you don't have those things. Maybe that's not meant for you. Maybe it's not meant for you in general, in life, or maybe right now. You know what I'm saying? You have to think about it. We all are here for a purpose. I'm not trying to preach to you about all oh, self-worth, all of this. I'm just trying to say, you know what I'm saying? Don't go beating yourself down because your friend's got something that you don't have. You know what I'm saying? Your friend could be sitting in on the other side of the window like, damn, I wish I had Leah's lifestyle because it's so easy for her at this age. She's still got her whole life ahead of her and she's able to be free. So don't go knocking what you really don't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody loves to have a person. True indeed, but you got to know when that person is there for you and is it a time or place. And if you know this motherfucker is not treating you nicely in the way you're worth it, why the fuck is you sitting around because you're lonely? Let me tell you, you continue to be lonely even with that person in a relationship with you. Because like you just said, he only using you for one thing or a couple of things, but you understand it ain't nothing positive. So, I mean, I'm just saying. You know, that's just me just saying and just talking like, I love to be in a relationship too. Trust me. Don't y'all think I would like to be in a motherfucking relationship? For real. All I do all day, every day is sit in this motherfucking house. Or not all day, but not all day, but I I ain't got no motherfucking life. Like, seriously, um, I'm a... I, I don't got no, 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 no life like that. You know, I take care of my kids. I work. I do videos. I vlog. I do shit like that. I make wigs. That's my fucking life. Whoop he do I get really lonely, too. However, I'm just not going to sit around and, like, and let any old jackass treat me like shit because I don't want to be alone. I bitch rather be the fuck alone than be with some asshole for real. <sighs> Hashtag amen if you feel me and you and you with me on that. Meaning, you rather be the fuck alone than be with some deadbeat motherfucker who's mistreating you. I don't know about y'all, but I'd rather be by myself, okay? So, here's the thing. It's cool. Everybody got to be alone at a time. However, my dear, and I'm just sitting here fighting with this motherfucking eyebrow for real. Fuck it. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you got to be the fuck alone. Just to get ahead. I'm just saying. Like. That shit. Is so unhealthy. In a relationship where people use you. That's why. I be so bitter sometimes. You know what I mean? Like. I really be bitter sometimes. Because. I've been alone. And every time. Or not even every time. But. Whenever I try to be a human being and let a man in my life, they just be so cool in the beginning. And then you find out who they really are, which is a motherfucking bum ass nigga. Okay? Seriously. And then that's the shit where you be like, you know what? I ain't got time for this shit. I'm going to just be by my goddamn self because you're going to cost me more money just fucking with your deadbeat ass than I need to lose. So I'm going to just be over here in this corner. So I know sometimes people be like, oh, she just be acting like that because she don't got no man. No, bitch. I don't be acting no certain way towards men because I ain't got one. I be acting a certain way towards men or females. Let's not forget it because I ain't putting up with the bullshit. I'm not putting up with the bullshit. And, and Lee, why the fuck should you? 
Just because you a big girl does not mean that you got to be able to sit there and take whatever fucking bullshit a man dish out to you. I wish I would. I wish a nigga would fucking stress me out that motherfucking bad to where I was taking his shit all the motherfucking time and putting up with any old fucking thing. Let me tell you, that must mean that I'm on my last hope, okay, in life, on my last leg. I mean, I get lonely too, but I don't get motherfucking desperate, all right? Lee, you know he treats you dirty, and you know he using you for whatever. You already done said it. So why I keep being stupid? Let him go, honey. Let him go. You know, like the, the tumbleweed that, that blow in the wind. Let his ass be like that motherfucking tumbleweed and let him go. Because seriously, it's not worth it. Bitch, you're going to go crazy and you're going to lower your self-esteem more and more if you stick around with this sorry deadbeat dude. I'm sorry, but I wouldn't give a fuck how much money the nigga had. If if he's treating you like shit, he, he damn sure ain't um spending no money on you. And even if he was, who gives a shit? Money ain't everything. Sometimes it's cool to be without and shit respect and self-worth is a, is a, just a whole lot more I'm pretty sure and I know for a fact that you would definitely get over him come on we as women just take a lot of shit from men sometimes I notice it'd be fucked up cause We'll put up with a whole bunch of shit, you know what I'm saying? And, like, just because we want to feel up, like, it's sad that people can mistreat another person, you know what I'm saying, because they know that that person is just vulnerable and they just want to be loved. Like, wouldn't you feel fucked up as an individual to use somebody because you know their status? Like, oh, she vulnerable, she lonely and shit. I'm going to just fuck with her, make her feel good about herself and get what I can. They may not be saying it in those exact words, but they fucking doing that shit. Like, how could you as a person feel about yourself to do that to another human being? Like, I'm just sorry. I couldn't do that to somebody because I would just feel low, just like really low as a person. But then it's like sometimes we as women just be feeling like so... Not even vulnerable, but lonely. Like, Leaf, she feel lonely right now. That's cool. Your friends got kids. And your friends got marriage. And your friends got relationships. Bitch, what the fuck? I had that same shit, too. What did it turn out to be? It was really great in the beginning. So don't always think and look. You're on the other side of the window looking in. You don't really see really much, okay? And when I say you don't really see really much, it's because you can't really see all of the issues that's going on in the house of your friends. Those are just your friends, you know what I'm saying? Unless you a fly on the wall, bitch, you're not really going to know what's going on in that household. Me, honestly, I really wouldn't care to know, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to, something, there are some things in life like, okay, so you know what? Sometimes I ain't even going to front. I will look at another person, it, could, it might could be even another YouTuber, and feel like, damn, I wish I had it going on like them. They got a lot going on for them. They got this, they got that. You know what I'm saying? I love their videos. Wish I could do stuff like that. So everybody feels that way sometime in life about another person. You know what I mean? I get it because I have felt that way many a times. And then I had to say to myself, self, like more than one time, okay, several times, like, yo, stop worrying about what the fuck they doing because the more you worry about what the fuck they doing, you're not going to improve yourself because you're going to be so busy worrying about what the fuck they doing. You know what I'm saying? We get that way. We feel that way. We feel, we, we all feel some type of way in our life. You know what I'm saying? We all may feel there's a low point in our life. We all may look at somebody and wish we had what they had. It's like you wish you had what your friends had. And your friends might be sitting there wishing they had what the fuck you had, bitch. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, you don't really know what a person has had to go through to achieve certain shit that they've had. So... Never feel like you're losing out on life or you're a failure or your life is passing you by. 27 is not old. Okay, honey. 27 is not old. I'm 43. Imagine how I feel then. Shit. I sit here. I have no friends. And the only friend that I do have, they're both far from me. Like, they don't live in the same states. I mean, Rebecca's here for right now, but she'll be leaving in a month. Then what? 
I'll be definitely alone. Like, dang, what the fuck is a bitch to do? You know what I'm saying? And my daughter Tati is like, go out and make some friends. You need to go out and make some friends. I'll just be like, I don't think so. Why not? You need to go out and make friends. For what? Why I want to make friends for? Why? Why? And that's exactly how I say it to her. Why the fuck I want to make friends? For what? Because of what? They're going to just want to use me, okay? I want a friend that doesn't even know who the fuck I am. Sometimes I say that to myself. Like, I get tired of sitting here and not having anything to do. Like, I want to go enjoy life as well. But, hell, I ain't got no friends. So, what do I do? So, Lee, don't feel like you're the only person in the world that is going through some shit in your life. Things are meant for what they are meant for. Meaning... God has given you life, and I know I'm not that religious of a person. However, I will tell you this. I do know this. I might not know it, but I do feel this way, rather. We're here for a certain purpose, and we're all given what we can handle and what we can make handle, or basically not what we can make handle, but we're, we all, by God or by whomever you believe in, we all have a purpose here. We all have a purpose in life, you know what I'm saying? And she's this person in life because that's what she is and your friends have this marriage and in and and kids because this is their purpose in life everybody has a purpose so maybe that's not your purpose or maybe that's not your purpose right now just because you have one ovary stop being so negative gosh life is too short to be so negative and to be worried about what everybody else the fuck have it's cool yes everybody want to have a family but sweetheart you have friends and that's a lot of things that a whole lot of other people don't have too okay so stay blessed with that and stop fucking letting some deadbeat ass mother fucking man who ain't shit take your fucking shit and use you if you want to continue to sit there and know that he's using you and he only calling you for some pussy and he only want to come around when you got something then bitch you need to wake the fuck up and get your eyes checked the fuck out okay i'll be damned if i'm gonna keep letting some motherfucker use me and take my shit huh you best to hope i don't go upside your goddamn head all right for real let that motherfucker go and stop worrying about what your friends have and have, be happy for them, okay? Because you don't know how they feel about your lifestyle. You think that just because what you see is so easy, go lucky. Having children is hard and it is not cheap. Having a marriage and a family is hard and it is not cheap. So, girl, feel happy because you should feel blessed. You got you 27 years old. You are able to do a whole lot of things that a lot of people cannot, which is explore the world, explore your opportunities. You know what I'm saying? Shit, you staying in one state? Girl, if you ain't got no kids and no man, you better go ahead and venture out and move somewhere else and try to see what you can find. Because a bitch, you got to go. And venture out, that might be how you're going to find Mr. Right and get pregnant. I'm just saying, or have you a family. Either way, you got something over them that you they don't have. So, feel blessed about that shit. Feel happy. Okay? So, let's move on to the next one. So, this one is pretty long. I don't even think she apologized in the beginning for it to be long. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Hi, April. How are you? I have been a viewer since you started your first YT channel. Yes, girl. I love your point of view on life, so I know you're just the one to talk about this. It all started back in February this year. I ran. I was out with my husband, and we ran into my older cousin. Let's just call her Selena. My husband and I were going to see his sister at work and tell her about our recent marriage and upcoming reception when I saw my cousin Selena. Selena was wasted, drunk, staggering, and crying. She had lost her purse, phone, and keys. One of the girls there found her things, and I took them. I told my husband I'd take my cousin home and meet him later. When I told my cousin, let's go, she flipped on me. I don't need your effing help. I'm fine. But I didn't trust her. She has had tickets for driving drunk before. So I called her best friend, which is also a cousin of ours. Now, April, I don't have a relationship with either of these girls, but we have been trying to work on that. So I thought I was doing the right thing by calling her. My other cousin, whom I call, let's just call her Nancy. Nancy told me to take her to her mother's house. While I'm speaking to Nancy, Selena is telling me how she slept with some guy and cheated on her man. The guy she slept with was at the place we were at and came outside. They began to argue. Again, I tried to get Selena to leave with me or have me call her a cab. This guy was drunk as fuck too, calling me all type of bitches and girl, I damn near punched this you know what, okay? 
But Selena jumped in front of me and said, don't hit him. I love him. Now, mind you, Nancy, our other cousin who I call, heard all of this. I guess she heard it in the background. I hung the phone up and went inside to my husband to calm down. Who is right behind me but Selena's ass yelling some more. Selena's mother called my phone and Selena snatched it out of my hand saying, how could you call my mom? Now I'm pissed. She then came over to our table and my husband said he wanted to leave. We stood up to go and Selena yells, is your husband's dick public? While standing in front of him. So he couldn't stand up. I told that bitch, meet me outside. The entire bar walks out with us as Selena is grabbing at forks on the tables to try and stab me with them. The bar owner tried to stop her, but she was too pissed. After we got outside, she did nothing, yelling and cussing. I'm thinking it only takes one hit and this bitch is out. But I also knew she was drunk and is an alcoholic. I shoved her a few times and decided to leave before things got too bad. It was hella embarrassing, and I didn't want my new husband, sister-in-law, and all of the bar to see me like that. However, I did have her thing still. So the next day, I apologized to her and asked for the same in return, an apology, so we could get past this. I got nothing. So in May, I had my graduation, my birthday party, and I even invited our other cousin, Nancy, and not Selena. My husband did not want her there. Selena has a baby cousin of ours, call me and ask if she can come. I said, no, you did not apologize. Nancy was all, girl, I understand, I agree with you. You know, basically like edging her on. Fast forward to my bachelorette party. I know I'm married, but since we eloped, I never got one. Now I planned my party on the weekend of Nancy's birthday, but I texted her a prior and told her my plans. I even mentioned happy birthday and if she could make it or had different plans. She responded several days later saying, okay, and thank you. Anyway, I had heard Selena was really upset that she wasn't invited to my reception, which my husband also didn't want her at. So I wanted to try one last time to squash the shit. I extended an invite to her, but not her or Nancy showed. Nancy had been ignoring my text for weeks, so I figured Selena was in her ear. I don't know. I don't do well with women anyway, so I'm about to sit, be sick of all this bullshit. I texted Selena and I told her I thought she was being funny, me um, being funny, and she went went full in on me, calling me every name in the book. The, this ended with me blocking her. So Nancy calls to uninvite me to her party, which is two days before my reception, saying she didn't want drama at her. She didn't want drama at her home. She says she thought I was trying to make things worse by inviting Selena. I ended up uninviting her ass to my event too. April, I don't know if I should try and make up with these two or let go completely. They seem like some fake people to me, but nevertheless, they are family. Please help. Sign tired. Girl. You talk about sign tire. My motherfucking mouth is dry as hell now. Okay, so. From what I've grasped from this, Selena and Nancy are cousins, but they're best friends as well. Selena is the drunk one, and Nancy is the other one that was just called during, during the altercation. The young lady who wrote me um, did she ever say her name? She never said her name. Okay, well, we just going to call her April then. No, I don't really want to call her April. We, we'll just call her Peggy. So Peggy is the one who got just got married. She eloped. She is out with her, her new husband, about to go meet her sister-in-law and tell her about the news about her eloping and then getting married, et cetera, et cetera, when she runs into her, her blood member, her blood, her family member, blood relative, Selena, who is drunk as hell. Okay? So she all drunk, and she run into her out in public, and basically she's trying to help the young lady. Okay. That's cool. Always help your family members. Whatever. She's trying to help the young lady. And bring her home. Or whatever. Selena don't want to go home because she's so drunk. She's telling her she don't need her fucking help. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. And they back and forth get into an altercation. This girl is in the middle of wherever she's at. 
in the middle of an altercation with Selena, Selena's date, and all kind of crazy shit. She done kept getting back and forth into it with both of her family members, okay? Now, they're being petty, uninviting you, talking shit. You're like, oh, should I take, um, should I, should I go? Should I uninvite them? Should I try to make up with them? Let me tell you something. I was all over the place. Like, I'm not confused, but the way I see this, them two are best friends. And you have tried on numerous occasions to try and make right with them. And basically, it doesn't work. I tell you what. I don't give a fuck if you are a relative. If we don't get along and we can't get along, I'm not trying to fuck with you. You got a couple of times to piss me the fuck off. And after that, I'm not going to fuck with you, family or not. She just said they fake, but they're family. She feels they're fake, bitch, or that she knows they're fake. If you know they're fucking fake, why the fuck would you want to hang out with them? Why would you want to make nice with them? That would mean that you just as fake as they are. Are you trying to make nice with them just so that you just make nice with them? Or, or do you want to make nice with them? Because I'm going to call it making nice. Or do you want to make nice with them just because you want to be a family member with them and you want to hang out with them. Because either way, I wouldn't give a fuck if they were my next door neighbors. If we not getting the fuck along and you don't like me like that and y'all acting catty and petty and don't want to fuck with me and I've already tried to be your motherfucking friend and we still can't get along, bitch, I guess that means that we not supposed to be motherfucking friends or family members and get the fuck along. I'm just saying, I could care less who the fuck you are, Okay. <laughs> Like I said, next door neighbor or not. And just because they family members does not mean that we have to be friends. It's nice to be able to get along with every motherfucker body. Friend, foe, family members, enemies, whatever you want to call it. It's nice to be able to get along with everybody. But sometimes you just not supposed to, okay? Some shit ain't meant to be. And that's some shit right there that just ain't meant to be. Because if you were supposed to be any of them bitches' friends, then you would have been a friend already and you wouldn't go back and forth. You wouldn't have to compete. You wouldn't have to invite the other one or not the other one and all the shade be thrown around. You wouldn't have to go through all of that. So obviously, they're not meant to be your motherfucking friends. And I'm sorry, but I ain't about to be kissing nobody's fucking ass to be friends with me. Fuck that, okay? Your husband don't like the one because she didn't act like a hooligan all up in the street acting crazy, embarrassing you and him. <sighs> Those type of people is the ones you need to stay away from. They are family members. There are a lot of great family members. And then you have family members that are just pure assholes. And you just cannot fuck with them in general. Trust and believe. I'm pretty sure that we all have them. I'm pretty sure ain't nobody unacceptable to that shit. We all got some family members that ain't worth having at any of our family functions or barbecues. Hell, I know. I sure do. I got quite a few of them motherfuckers that I wouldn't invite to anything of mine, okay? So please, trust and believe just because them bitches is your family does not mean that you have to fucking socialize with them. Yes, family, they always say family's everything. Family is everything. You got to have family. Huh. Family is everything. That's right, but it don't have to be your family blood relative. Some of your friends could be the best family you ever had. I mean, come on now, look at me and Rebecca. They're like family. That's what I call them. That I call them my family. You know what I mean? They sound like a bunch of cackling hens, if you ask me. Y'all know what cackling hens are? Them bitches that sit the fuck around and talk about people all the motherfucking time. That's what, um, that's what a cackling hen is. Always talking about somebody and shit. That's what the fuck they sound like. I wouldn't want to be friends with them. And shit, they sound like they be having too much beef going on. I don't think so. I think I'd rather just sit my fucking ass right here on the bench and be all by myself. Sooner or later, somebody will come along that want to really be my friend. Fuck all that fake shit. There's, there's enough bullshit going on in the world to where we don't need to have no motherfucking fake friends. I'm saying... Or even worse, fake family members. You'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm inviting Trish to the barbecue. You know, the 4th of July barbecue. We all going to hang out and shit and blow the fireworks. I got some drinks and shit. You know, and then here come Trish and her family and everybody else. So one of the other family members is all sitting around. And y'all kicking in, grilling and shit, drinking and shit, drinking and drinking and drinking. And then somebody get a little bit tipsy and whatever and want to talk shit and then all the bullshit start happening, okay? Then that's when you find out, oh, 
I thought that family member was cool. That motherfucker is just as fake as they come. That's how it be. And if your ass can see that right now and you've been trying to be friends with them, honey, this is what I'm going to tell you to do. Avoid them, um, avoid them bitches at any family function, okay? It don't matter if it's during Christmas time, okay? It don't matter if it's during Thanksgiving, somebody's birthday party, okay? Pool party, a fucking christening, okay? If you see them at any family function, just fucking avoid them. Because they're catty and neither one of them bitches like you. And you don't have to beg for friendship, okay? Especially not from somebody fake. You can't invite the one to your house as it is, so. I'm sorry, but I just don't like drama. I know my mom probably will. My mother is the same way, so, you know. But I just don't like drama. Like, I be feeling like this, like, okay... Just because you're my family member don't mean that we got to be the best of friends. Like, I have cousins that I can't fucking stand. Like, the one bitch, she, her edges, her hairline is all the way back here where my headband is at. You see where my motherfucking headband is at? Her hairline is all the way the fuck back there. Like, kid, no lie. I'm not motherfucking exaggerating. I, I can't show you her picture because that would be dead ass fucking wrong. But I'm going to tell y'all, for real though, her hairline... Is all the way back here. I don't know what the fuck happened to her hairline. Me and my other cousin be like, damn, what the fuck happened to her? And she stay posting pictures and selfies on the internet like she is the shit. Like, for real. Like, she just be posting pictures on the social media, on the gram and shit. And on the FB, I don't know if that's even a fucking hashtag for Facebook, but she be posting shit and... Her shits be, like, way up in front of the camera. Like, seriously, back the fuck up with your camera. Stop putting the phone so close to your motherfucking face, all right? Like, tilt that shit some type of way. You know, like, you have to work on that, but stop being so motherfucking close. And I hate that bitch, and she don't like me neither, all right? She don't like me neither because I done blew her spot up because she kept talking to me about one of my other cousins, which is my favorite cousin in the whole world, and she kept talking to me about her. But and she would talk shit about her, and I wouldn't ever say nothing. And I told her to stop. She didn't ever stop, so when I spoke to my favorite cousin when she was talking about, I told her, right? I was like, you know what? I'm tired of this bitch. I'm tired of this fucking bitch. I told her. So my favorite cousin, Kay, Kenya is her name. She gonna be on the phone with that other bitch, my other cousin. No hairline. And she talking to her. No hairline didn't even know I was on the other end. She trying to play it off like she cool and shit. And like, they the best of friends, etc., etc. But meanwhile, she don't know that I'm on the other fucking end listening to all the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, listening to the whole conversation like, you fake fucking bitch. How dare you? You fake bitch. And Kenya didn't have me on the phone to confront her. She just had me on the phone to listen to her. Like, listen to this bitch. She, she, for somebody who don't really like me or whatever, always talking shit about me, she sure is on here acting like she best of friends with me. And I was like, oh, word. So I'm listening and I'm listening. And I couldn't take it no more. Like, for real? I was like, you know what? How fucking dare you? You gonna sit up here act like you can, your motherfucking friend. You just was fucking talking shit about her. And she trying to say, um... What's she trying to say? She was trying to say no, she didn't. And I was like, I, I, all I remember basically is going off on her. And I was like, look at you and you keep posting pictures of you and your whack ass looking friends. You and your ratchet ass looking friends. And I said ratchet because her friends be looking real ratchet. Okay, ratchet, ratchety ratch. All right. And um, so I said that to her and she was like, well, we'll be ratchet. And I was like, you damn right you'll be fucking ratchet. Look at you. I just, like, went in. And um, so she hung up. She hung up. And Kenya was on the phone cracking the fuck up. She's like, girl, why you do that? You wasn't supposed to do that. I was like, nah, fuck that. Because I hate fake shit. 
I don't give a fuck. You family or not. Don't be all fucking fake. I hate fake shit. You know you was just on the phone yesterday talking shit about her. And now you want to be on the phone with her acting like you her best motherfucking friend. Or you her number one motherfucking sponsor and shit. Like, go ahead with that bullshit. That go for family members too. So, girl, please. Don't even worry about them fucking catty ass bitches. Who gives a fuck if they're your family members? Them be the worst ones. Because they feel like you family. So, they entitled to get something from you or whatever. Now, that's when no hairline be trying to contact me. Well, she don't try to contact me no more. Not after I done blew her motherfucking spot up. But that's when she would. She leave little fucking comments. And even, not even her, my other cousin too, who moved down south. She always thought she was better than everybody. But she would own, always want to be my friend when she want a fucking wig. Bitch, why am I even giving you a wig? You don't know how to wear the shit. And shit, your motherfucking hairline is not going to fucking be receding all the way back here to your nape. That shit going to... Listen, who am I to be sitting here talking shit about that girl? But I'm just saying, family members be the one that get you too. So stop worrying about them fake ass bitches. They're family members, then let them just stay that shit. Who gives a fuck? You ain't happy to be their friend because they family members. Fuck that. Those be the ones that will get your ass first. Because like I said, they feel like they family members, so they entitled to that shit. Man, please. I wish a motherfucker would. Hmm. I'll be looking at you like you my cousin from when? Bitch, I don't know you. This is my cousin and my si this is my sister right here. You be looking like that bitch is white. Hmm. And your point is, she my motherfucker. Ride or die. So this bitch is family. I don't know who the fuck you are. I know this bitch is not about to stab me in my motherfucking back. So I'm saying. Girl, please don't even worry about them cackling ass bitches. So now I'm going to use this. Shop Miss A U H D primer. That I tell you guys all the time, you better stop sleeping on Shop Miss A. They have everything for a dollar, but they got this other cool line that they made, which is the A two O line. Oh my God, that's the palette that I was using. They got this little magnetic Z palette and all these shadows, bronzers, contours, highlight. This highlight is everything. Like, y'all see that? Mmm. I think it was like two dollars. They got a bunch of stuff, a bunch of shit. Okay. Um, so I do like their colors, but I'm going to just use this face primer on certain parts of my face because it feels a little oily. Um, mm -hmm. I am so hungry. All right, guys. So let's move on to the next real talk. Okay. So hungry. So this one is long. Hi, April. Don't kill me. This letter is long. At least she was honest and said that shit. Thanks for continuing the Real Talk segment. I'm writing you today about a situation that has been going on for 14 years between my daughter's father and I. You can call him Marcus and me, Amy. I met my daughter's father in 98 and we became cool friends. We tried to have a relationship in the beginning, but I realized I couldn't trust him. So I decided it would be better if we were just friends. He told me he had a daughter in Jamaica and that the mom trapped him. She told, she told him she was on birth control and she wasn't and ended up getting pregnant with his daughter. He said he moved here to the U.S. to get away from the mother because she was pursuing a relationship with him that he did not want. At that time, I encouraged him to remain in his daughter's life because she had nothing to do with her mother and father's relationship and he agreed that he would do that fast forward three years later he and i were still friends but both in different relationships we would chat over the phone about our relationships and have basic conversations about our accomplishments in life eventually the relationship he was in had ended so he calls to me would be a lot more so his calls to me his phone calls to me would be a lot more frequent than normal. Most times I wouldn't answer his calls and if I did it would only be to talk for a second. Shortly thereafter my relationship with my boyfriend ended. So I started engaging in conversations more with Marcus. On a Wednesday he called me and during conversation um, I accidentally slipped and told him I was no longer in a relationship. From there, he asked if he could spend the upcoming weekend with me. I told him yes, but really didn't plan on seeing him. So that Friday, I went out with a friend, had some drinks, and smoked some weed. It seems like as soon as I got on a level, he started ringing my phone, asking me what time we were going to meet. I was about 30 minutes away from my house, but 50 minutes away from mine. So I told him I would come visit him in a few hours. 
On my way to his home, I stopped and brought a three pack of condoms because I knew I wanted to have sex. I also brought some things with me to freshen up. When I got to his house, I was still a little buzzed. Before I hopped into the shower, I boldly handed him the pack of condoms and said, be ready when I get out. I didn't like him because the trust was broken and I knew I didn't want a relationship. We were just friends and that's how I wanted it to stay. So I came out of the shower and saw the open pack of condoms on his nightstand with one condom packaging sitting on top of the box. So I knew he had put the condom on. When we started having sex, it was feeling too good. So I said, wait, did you put the condom on? It doesn't feel like it. He's feeling too good. It's feeling too good. He said, yes, that he said, yes, that, that he had it on and it was feeling so good that I just let him keep going. When it was all over and he pulled out, I touched his penis and realized the condom was not on. I was so mad. I got up, hopped in the shower and got dressed to leave. He was begging me not to be upset, but I was lit. I told him I knew I couldn't trust him and this was all a mistake me being there. A month later, I found out I was pregnant. He said he would be there and I said, okay. During the pregnancy, he got back with his old girlfriend and didn't take any initiative to be responsible for my baby. He let it be known by telling me he was not the father, etc., etc. So I called the child support and asked them if I could apply for support for an unborn baby. They told me yes. So that's what I did. I was angry, so I basically tore him a new one. But the whole pregnancy, but, but but the whole time during my pregnancy, the child was the child support was set to almost two thousand a month. He's an engineer, and he tried to come to a lower agreement just before my daughter's birth. I cussed him out and told him I'd see him in court. He was only calling to protect his pockets. I did so much stuff while I was pregnant because I wanted him to pay me in tears for all of the low down stuff he did to me. I was really mean. So when I'm, so when my daughter was born, he was forced to take a DNA by child support and ended up paying me just under $1,500 a month in child support. Because of all of the damaging things I did to hurt him during my pregnancy, he was bitter and stayed away from me and my daughter. Now it's going on 14 years and he is still bitter and doesn't have a relationship with her. Had he never seen her or spent time with her in person? My daughter has an older brother who has been more of a father figure in her life. My son is 28 and my daughter will be 15 in August. She doesn't seem to be bothered by not knowing her father. And I never told her anything bad about her father because I didn't want to mess up her head. To this day, she thinks she can go see him anytime. My daughter is a straight A student, very smart and very beautiful. I have tried to make the best life for both of my children and people say I'm a great mom. My mom say I gave Marcus everything he deserved when I dogged him out and not to feel bad about what I did. My daughter seems to be just fine. My question to you is, should I have any regrets about what I did and should I try to initiate a relationship between them? I tried a few times in the past and he was an idiot each time, still trying to get revenge, but only hurt himself. He says he is going to tell my daughter about all of the stuff I did to him, which is really done. Sincerely, Amy. Wow, I was about to start crying. This shit, that shit. So first of all, her daughter is 15 years old now. Marcus and Aunt and Amy. Okay, so Marcus is a baby daddy. What's fucked up about it is they was friends. They was friends from the get-go. You know what I'm saying? Friends from the jump. And for him to go ahead and do that to her, basically, that first of all, for him to even break the condom was real sneaky and was real conniving, okay? It was real sneaky and conniving. That was some fucked up shit. What if he not just gave her a baby, but gave her um, some type of disease? You know what I'm saying? What if he would have gave her the disease by not wearing the condom? Then what he going to say he didn't give it to her? It was bad enough that he did that, but for him to, to tell her that he was going to be there and he was going to help her and he was going to take care of the baby with her, and then as soon as she got further along her pregnancy, he started acting like a real asshole, like a real jerk to her. That was really fucking dead wrong. Like, seriously, that part was dead ass wrong. Like, how could you do that to somebody? Like, wow. He was already fucked up by, you know what I'm saying? You already fucked up by not wearing the condom, lying about it, all right? 
that shit is fucked up. But then for you to not even stand up as a man and keep your promise, that was even more fucked up. Like, I would feel fucked up as a person if I did that to somebody. Like, got them pregnant. She got pregnant against her own wishes. Like, you know what I'm saying? She gave you the motherfucking condoms. Fucked up. Real quick, you guys. I don't know. Have you guys ever heard of this foundation, The Ordinary Colors? Well, it's supposed to be really cheap or whatever. Inexpensive. It's like, with six bucks. It's supposed to be really good. Anyway, I will talk about it in another video. So that's what I'm using. Let's try it out. Okay. So, first of all, it was real fucking conniving. That shit was so conniving to just... Get the girl pregnant like that. She got pregnant against her own fucking will and kept the baby. I commend her on that because I would be real fucking mad. I just had some unexpected pregnancy and I was already here protecting myself. So at least I thought what I really should have been protecting myself was not just your dick, but against you in general as a person. She thought he was cool. You know what I'm saying? Because they had been friends for a while. Oh yeah, she went over there because she wanted to have sex with him. But damn, she was not aware that that was about to happen. And what's so fucked up about it is he gave her a promise. He said he was going to be there. And then he don't even have a relationship with his daughter. She's 15 years old and doesn't have a relationship with her father and you supposed to feel bad about what you did to him while you was pregnant you really didn't do much you, you you made him pay child support while you was pregnant i commend you on that and shit fuck that you did what you were supposed to do you should never feel bad about anything that you've done especially the shit that he's put you through being pregnant is stressful enough and having to be pregnant and be dogged out while you're pregnant and treated like shit is even more fucked up. My like, God damn. And then he's walking around flaunting his ex-girlfriend because he's back with her so much. And he really didn't flaunt her around. But to me, if you got back with her and you went back to the bitch, then to me, that's flaunting her around. To me, that's like, you know, saying, yeah, bitch, that's right. I'm with the next bitch now. That, that's what I feel. That's what I feel like it is, like, basically. You know what I'm saying? Like, you fall, you flaunting her around. Um, that's, how, that's how I feel as a person. Like, I could be wrong for feeling that way. I'm going to just turn the light on real quick. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could be wrong for feeling that way. But me as a person, I feel like, in general, it was dead ass wrong. And your mom is right. Don't blame yourself for what you did to him during your pregnancy. Bitch, I didn't even think you really did anything. You did what you were supposed to do. Everything you did was by law. You got child support. What the motherfucking do? You told him like it fucking was. Fuck that nigga. He ain't been around. I, you know what? You tried two times to get him to be a father and to be there for your daughter and all of that good stuff. You tried twice. You tried twice. I'm not going to keep trying for to somebody who doesn't want to try. How, what are you going to do? You're going to drag him and make him be a part of your daughter's life? It's so sad when, you know what? I find it to be so sad that anybody that walk out on their kids, like, okay, life is hard, right? Life is just hard in general. Sometimes people can't afford to pay child support or can't afford to do a lot of things for the kid because their checking account ain't set up for it like Shit that. Shit don't matter but, all the fucking time. Like, yeah, it's nice to have money and be able to do, like, really great things for your kids and take them to really great places and buy them really nice stuff. Like, who doesn't want to do that for their kids? I'm pretty sure that everybody who has children want to do that for their, their kids. But that's not all it is. You know what I'm saying? So... A lot of people feel like just paying child support is just fine, you know, as long as I take care of the kid financially. But that's not their, all there is to it. Some kids need attention. Some kids will want the attention. You have to spend time with your children. Money ain't everything. I bet you that if you spend more time with them, they wouldn't even really care about all that, you know, unimportant shit like clothes or sneakers or video game because you're giving them so much attention and you're doing so many things with them you know i'm not saying that's really going to happen but maybe for some children that would make a big difference and they wouldn't be so absorbed into friend um bullshit you know what i'm saying that might help for some kids but maybe some not but what i'm saying basically is you gotta spend time with your kids and you tried twice you tried to help that nigga out that ninja out two times with getting to know his daughter you you shouldn't have to 
force anybody to get to know their children. I'm just saying, like, who does that? Where is that fucking, uh, fucking acceptable to be forced to have to get to know your kids or be forced to take care and pay for your kids? Like, I'm just trying to figure out where is that acceptable at? Like, you know what I'm saying? When I say be forced to ch and, and be forced to support your children. And yeah, niggas be forced to support their children. And I say that because if you got to take a dude to court to get some child support from their ass, that means you force them. If they can't just give it to you willingly, then that means you force their ass. So, you know what I'm saying? Where is that acceptable that you got to be forced to take care of your children? Like, that shit is not cool. Like, you should just want to take care of your kid. Even if you have to establish that as your kid, you should still want to just take care of it. It's definitely if you know that it's like your own kid. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't feel like anybody should have to be forced. You shouldn't have to go through all of that. You should just be like, oh, that's my kid. But you know what? Some people don't feel that way. And then what's so sad is some people just uh, walk away from their child and not give a fuck about them. Like meaning, oh, I don't care what they're doing. And I, I never seen them before. Maybe I've seen them one time in life. and But I don't care that I, I don't see them. Like, how do you just go through fucking life not wondering how your child is or not even wanting to bother to see your child? Like, God damn, you are that motherfucking self-absorbed and fucking selfish that you don't give a fuck about your own your own child? Like, damn, motherfuckers got the wrong thing going for themselves these days. Like, they just be doing the most, like seriously. I just be like, what the fuck? You know, I, me personally, I be so fucking confused sometimes. Like, okay, he ain't fucking with the mother, but he don't have to fuck with the baby mama. He could just like, I don't, I don't know. Me personally, I have. You guys already know, I have four kids with five pe five kids with four people. Um, I don't let that shit stress me out anymore because I, I, I didn't get child support. So, you know what I'm saying? And I got tired of fucking asking and shit like that. Like, well, I did get, I don't know if you want to consider it child support because it was $6 and like $6 and 25 or 50 cents every two weeks. <sighs> What the fuck was I supposed to do with that shit? Like, that was so humiliating. Like, seriously. Like, I was, like, so hurt behind that shit. Like, why would you even bother to give me that shit? That was just, like, dead-ass wrong. Like, you don't really think much of me to give me that little bit of um, child support. Like, and, but his ass was definitely okay with it. You know what I'm saying? He was definitely okay with that shit. Like, oh, yeah. That ain't much. And then I stopped getting those checks. Like, oh, shit. So, I have to fix my goddamn foundation. Oh, my God, you guys. Like, so, yeah. Like, I wouldn't feel bad about anything that I've done to a man or a baby daddy. You know what I'm saying? Especially while I'm pregnant. And he the one who got me pregnant by force and didn't even help me. Fuck that. I wouldn't feel bad. He deserved everything you gave him. You should have gave him an ass whipping is what I would have fucking did. You should have gave him an ass whipping. Now, here's the thing. This one thing that I just don't condone, okay? I mean, sometimes you, you might feel like you have to. You have no choice. But you know how some women... It's great to protect your child, you know, from, like, bullshit in life. But they don't be children forever, unfortunately. They just don't. But it's great to want to protect them from a lot of things in life. Me, personally, I don't bash my mom, um, any of my kids' fathers. It is what it is. You either going to know he's an asshole or you not. I'm pretty sure you don't need me to tell you he's an asshole, okay? Because you're going to find that shit out on your own. Amy, you don't have to tell your daughter nothing about his assholeism. And I don't even know if that's a motherfucking word, but 
he's an asshole because he's an asshole and he's an asshole by choice I know a lot of assholes by choice and then I know some that may not really be an asshole but I just call you an asshole because I feel like you're an asshole but when you're an asshole by choice is meaning you do dumb shit and, and purpose shit on purpose to hurt people and just because you just do dumb shit. That's an asshole by choice. And you know you're doing that dumb shit on purpose and just to be spiteful. That's an asshole by choice. You know what I'm saying? And there are a lot of motherfucking asshole by choices. Okay? And then there's some that you only an asshole because I'm going to say you a motherfucking asshole because you're going to piss me the fuck off about some dumb shit that you did today. Not that you always do. But then there's the assholes by choice or the assholes that just do dumb shit on a regular. They do dumb, spiteful shit on a regular because that's just what the fuck they do. That's when they're assholes by choice, okay? And I hate those motherfuckers. Like, seriously, I don't like assholes by choice. Because if I had a choice... Y'all motherfuckers all would be fucking laid out somewhere, but we not gonna do that. And th there is no man assholes by choice or female, because they come in both female and male versions, okay? Those are the motherfuckers that you just want to stay the fuck away from. You don't want to give them none of your time, none of your friendship neither, okay? None of your money, nothing. You just don't want to fuck with those assholes by choice because... They are always going to be a motherfucking asshole, regardless of what you think. So, why even motherfucking bother? Okay? I stay away from them. He is one of them. Okay? And with that being said, you don't have to tell your daughter nothing about his dumb fucking ass. You ain't got to explain to her that he's a deadbeat. You don't got to tell her how he don't take care of her or never has. And you definitely don't have to tell her the story about how she came about. Because that ain't none of her damn business. But she will find out on her own that her, her father is an asshole by choice. And regardless of what he tells her about you that's real fucked up that he would even open his fucking raggedy ass mouth to say i'ma tell her how you did me while you was while she was pregnant your daughter should be smart enough to say well why would she tell me why would she do these things to you i'm pretty sure she's smart enough don't worry about him and don't worry about hurting his motherfucking feelings or anything else he wasn't too concerned about it when he was fucking you and took off the condom and then promised you some bullshit that never never fucking happened so i wouldn't too worry too much about his feelings he got what he deserved and he probably didn't even get enough for all I'm concerned. But you tried enough times to re bring them together as a family or as father and daughter. And it didn't work. You cannot drag a horse to water or a mule or camel to water. Whatever the fucking saying is, you just can't. Some people, you got to leave them the fuck alone regardless of what they are to your child. And in the end, your daughter is going to fucking realize who that asshole really is. It don't take you to have to tell her because she's going to figure that shit out on her motherfucking own. Okay? Okay? And that's how I had to serve it up to my own kids. Y'all will figure that shit the fuck out about how he's an asshole and ain't worth shit. I don't have to fucking tell you. And I never have told my kids that, yeah, your dad's an asshole or he ain't do shit because they figure that shit out on their own after a while and be like, um, I don't remember you buying me shit and taking care of nothing or helping my mother with nothing. Okay? These kids get it after a while. Trust and believe and they fucking do. Hmm. And I know a lot of assholes by choice, which is so unfortunate. So, girl, please, why is you worried about his motherfucking feelings? <sighs> that nigga wasn't too concerned about your motherfucking feelings when um, you was pregnant. You had to do everything by yourself. Bitch, I wish I would have got $1,500 a month for child support. I'd have been happy with that shit. I couldn't believe the motherfuckers gave me six dollars. It was either six twenty-five or six fifty, and had the nerve to send that shit to me in a check. Like, what the fuck I'm supposed to do with this? Piss the fuck off. Like, I couldn't even buy a bag of diapers. And when I say a bag of diapers, I'm talking about the store brand. Not even no fucking real brand like Loves or fucking Huggies. I'm talking about, like, Pathmark brand, Price Chopper brand, Kroger brand, whatever brand you want to call that shit. CVS brand, Walgreens brand. I couldn't even get a bag of them shits, okay? With them fucking $6 checks. So fucking mad. But $1,500, girl, count your blessings because at least you get that. I wouldn't 
even worry about it too much because your daughter's not stupid. they kids, but they're not stupid kids. And it's all right there in the eye of the beholder. So let him tell your daughter whatever the fuck he want to tell her whenever he do come around. If he want to talk bad about you in front of your daughter, go ahead and let him because you know what? He gonna make himself look real motherfucking stupid. And I say this very freely because how dare you think you gonna talk shit about me in front of our daughter who knows I've been there since day one. That's gonna make his ass look real motherfucking stupid. And if he wanna look stupider, then let him go ahead and talk all the shit about you he wants to talk about you. I'm pretty sure your daughter is gonna look at him like he got five heads and probably have to put him in his motherfucking place. Girl, please, I wouldn't even worry my ass about that fucking dumb ass man. Some, some of them ain't even worry or worth being worried about I'm, I'm serious like for real some of the motherfuckers you just gotta be like what the fuck did you say the shit that come out of their mouth sometimes you just be like okay oh that was a little bit too much so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys have a safe fourth of july or had a safe one or whatever enjoy your summer and all the information below for ik house will be posted below or whatever um and yeah so stay diva and delicious leave your comments below and i love you guys oh i put my lipstick on okay so now i'm ready I think. Love you guys. Have a good one.